Hi, man, Armstrong. Welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today we have something interesting. It's a Qi or Qi wireless charger. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but it doesn't really matter because it just, as long as it works. Now, it did come in this rather flimsy envelope, and a feature of these, as you'll see now, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, is that they come with this ferrite shield on the back. And the ferrite shield is required for safe operation. It stops the sort of field this generates, jumping around, going in the wrong place, overheating your batteries and exploding things. So I'm a little bit disappointed it came smashed. I would probably advise the company who's shipping these to probably put them in a box or at least a jiffy bag because just the gentlest pressure will smash that because it's just a ceramic. But let, let's not let that stop us in our investigation. So you've seen these and basically the idea is that you get something like your phone and you pop it on and it goes blah blah charging and they tend to work pretty well. I um, really am surprised actually how well they work and it really saves the port of your phone getting worn out. So much so that I was wondering if it's possible for me just to glue one of these onto the back of my case in a kind of retro styly just so that I can charge it using the USB port on the wireless charger. These in fact are about 70% efficient so they're actually surprisingly efficient. You can see that a wired charging system isn't even 100%. And uh, I'll just show you how these work. I'm going to show them how they work in operation in a moment but just let's go through the basics of this because it's nice and simple. So you effectively here have a coil and the coil has an AC signal, so it's doing this, and it's about 20 volts, as far as I understand it, at around 200, I'm thinking hertz. And then your phone basically has another coil, which is wired up to the battery. And uh, this sort of magnetic field obviously causes uh, an excitation on this side and then that generates current and then that charges the battery at that fabled 70%. And I actually have my oscilloscope kind of set up so I've got a probe at least so we'll do be doing a little bit of probing of this when it's running. But let's just actually have a go of it just to really convince ourselves that it's working well. And I have two ways that we can test this. I've got the old charging doctor and the new charger doctor. So, and a sort of nice big hefty power supply. The kind that I get on eBay sent to me. Uh, can we see that? Yes, we can. I brought this because maybe I thought we'd be able to see the L CD screen sort of not so good and the LEDs will be better, but they're equally bad. I think the LCD is winning, so we're going to keep that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. We've got a power lead, which is just a standard USB micro like you've got on your own phone. And I'm going to plug that in to the end of this board. And this board was three pounds, by the way. So I kind of almost sometimes feel bad at having to raise an issue with eBay and say, look, this board I paid three pounds for didn't work but you know you have to you have to complain if it doesn't work otherwise you're just wasting your money so now we've got the screen in iShot and I'm just going to get my phone and interesting enough my phone is in a case which really wasn't very um, charge friendly so we'll see what it does if I can actually get this in the picture uh, let's try it here no. So the sweet spot for this phone is about here on its charging base. Yep, it just flashed on the screen. I'll zoom out just to show you. See in the corner there, there's a sort of 90%. Uh, it's trying. It's certainly trying. I'm going to move it a little bit. You know what? Ugh, let's just get it out of the bloody case. I don't know why. I just don't do that. So you can see there's a blue LED also on this board just here. When, when the blue LED flashes, it means it's sort of working. Okay. It's working now. Ish. Thinking about it. Yep, yep, yep. Stable, still there. Good. Right, so let's look at the screen. So we've got 4.56 volts coming out of this at 0.6 amps. 
So 600 milliamps of charge going into the phone, and that's not very much. But you have to remember the phone can communicate with the charger to let it know its requirements. And if we look on the phone, we can see it's pretty full. So it's kind of only on a trickle. Let's do a comparison though, because as we do have the phone here, with its rather ropey uh, USB port, and I plug the phone in to the charger, and I'm going to sort of might have to manhandle it. But look here, ah, interestingly, that's gone up to 9.44 volts because the phone now has asked for the sort of turbo charging, but then it's registering 0, 0.00 amps, so that's weird. And that could be something to do with this broken wire. So let's try the wireless one more time. So just going to plug that in. I don't know. Come on, come on. Just moving the phone around till we get. Ah, there we go. So the phone's working again. Again, 4.58 volts at 0.67 amps more or less so yeah there you go it's working the phone's at 89 percent charge the blue led on this came on will probably go off now in a moment and it has so all that leads us to do of course is to do something with an oscilloscope so i'm going to try to click so it's live i'm going to try to click the probe onto here and we're going to ground that on the other side we might have a little bit of difficulty because the unit itself might need an actual phone. In fact, let's pop the phone on there. Okay, so the phone's come on. We're reading our 4.54 volts with 0.6 milliamp, 0.6 amps. There we go. It's sort of fluctuating a little bit as if it's not quite happy and I can see the phone actually going on and off. So we're going to reposition the phone slightly. That looks stable now. 0.76 uh, amps. So that's that's really interesting. So positioning, obviously, you need to get those antennas. If those antennas are really aligned on top of each other, you'll get a better power um, a better power coupling. So I'm just going to turn the scope on, and we'll have a look, see what we can see. So you can see on the oscilloscope, nice and simple. You've got blue lines and red lines. The blue lines represent the actual peak-to-peak -peak value, and you can see we're running around 200 kilohertz. That's about to uh, well, <laughs> I reckoned it was 200 hertz, so it's a whole order of magnitude greater than I expected. And that's probably because the higher the frequency, the better coupling and probably the uh, better transmission of the um, power, and then you sort of convert that back down again. You'll see on the red lines, we've got a peak-to-peak -peak voltage, though, of around 13.6 volts. So I thought I read in the spec it should be about 20 volts, but, you know, I'm not so too sure about that. Maybe there's a, a bit of leeway there. Um, something that's very interesting as well, every now and then it does sort of flicker and uh, change the waveform and then go back again because I think there's some sort of renegotiation between the phone and the charger every now and then. You know, maybe it, uh, the phone's requesting more or less charge or there's, there's certainly something in the communications protocol that allows that to happen. So that's what you'll see there. So yeah, it's more or less as we all expected. So the question you're probably asking though, this is all well and good, but why are you bothering this? What? What's the point? Well, the point is twofold, really. One, it allows me to possibly build my, you know, charging thing inside a case if I really was that way inclined, um, which I'm probably not. But secondly, I have a bedside radio, which I really like, and I do like to charge my phone at night. Now, it's a digital radio, so I'm not too bothered about the sort of interference that this may or may not cause and obviously I'm going to test that um, but my theory was I could open up that radio and I could stick this to the top you know there's a there's a sort of handle bit on the top and I could put this underneath where the handle is because my phone slips in rather nicely where that uh, handle goes and at night my phone would charge so I think that would be um, obviously just crazy useful so that's one thing I intend to do with it also you can buy the other end so you can buy these kits that go into mobile phone batteries and then allow them to interact with these and charge up. So what could be better than taking something like this, which kind of is a pain. It's got its own format connector. So I've got a USB adapter for that, which is a bit of a pain. But if I pop this off and I can see there's loads of free 
space in there because these antennas are really small. I can just have that in there and then I can put my Nintendo DS down on one of these suitable chargers and it will just charge the battery up internally without you know the wireless dock. And this could be built into something really cute because you could put this into a sort of Nintendo novelty or a NES case for all it matters um, and then use it as a dock. So that's my plan. Hopefully that's some use to you. Please feel free to comment down below, click like or subscribe if you're that way inclined and as ever. Thank you for watching.